Welcome to another edition of Durham Bulls Daily. This is where the Durham Bulls fans come to get their updates, their highlights, notes, and more every morning after the Durham Bulls play. I'm Patrick Keenis, broadcaster for the Bulls. You can subscribe to Durham Bulls Daily and get a notification when the new episodes drop. You do that on Apple, you do that on Spotify, and you can actually subscribe and watch these Durham Bulls Daily updates on our uh, YouTube channel at Durham Bulls TV. Second game of the series, Wednesday afternoon from Polar Park in Worcester, Massachusetts. Bulls dropped the opener 7-4 on Tuesday, so they were looking for the equalizer. Jacob Lopez was scheduled to start, but with the Tampa Bay Rays playing extra innings the night before on Tuesday, Lopez on the 40-man roster was held back, so Joe Record slotted in, and he opened for the Bulls. He went two innings, did not allow a hit, did issue a couple of walks, struck out three. A pass ball also factored in as he allowed a run in the bottom of the second inning, but that would only tie things up because Cameron Meisner hit a one-out home run in the top of the second against Worcester starter Richard Fitz. That would give the Bulls a 1-0 lead, and the Red Sox tied things up against record at the bottom of the second. In the top of the fifth, the Bulls had an opportunity to grab the lead. Rob Brantley, acting as the DH on Wednesday, singled with one out. C.J. Inahosa came up, drove a rising line drive over the head of left fielder Corey Rogier. Ray Rees, the third base coach for the Bulls, sent Brantley to try and score, and he was thrown out on a great relay from Nick Sogard, a former Tampa Bay Rays farmhand. Brantley was thrown out at home plate, and that kept the game tied 1-1. to Edwin Uceta had followed record through two scoreless innings, but into the fifth, pitch with some pretty bad luck. Gave up four consecutive hits on all end of the bat, softly hit balls, but they continued to find holes. A single, a double, another single, and a single in the right field. And then Mark Contreras came to the plate with Worcester already leading 3-1 to one to try and almost put the game away. Here's a swing and a knocker in the right center field. Fifth straight hit up the alley. Miser slides to cut it off beautifully. Pass third, Hickey. He'll score. In the second goes Contreras. Westbrook stops at third. Fifth straight hit by Worcester. That double by Contreras would make it 4-1. to one. Worcester would add a couple of runs in the bottom of the sixth inning against Nelson Alvarez. And it was 6-1 to one after 6. The only offense the Bulls were able to muster the rest of the way was an opposite field home run by Rob Brantley in the 8th inning, part of a 2-for-4 day for him. That closed it to 6-2, to two, but that would be the final. So the Bulls lose their second straight against Worcester, 6-2. to two. They fall to 6-11 and 11 on this young season. One injury update, Oslavis Basabe went down in Tuesday's opener against Worcester, hit by pitch on his right wrist. X-rays showed a fracture in his right wrist, so he was placed on the injury list prior to Wednesday's game, and he's going to be lost to the Bulls for upwards of uh, six to eight weeks, a tough day for Basabe on the 40-man roster, and that certainly affects the depth on the infield for the Tampa Bay Rays. So the Bulls fall 6-2 to two to Worcester. Another day game on Thursday. Nathan Wiles will start 3:05 first pitch from Polar Park in Worcester, Massachusetts. Once again, you can subscribe on Apple, subscribe on Spotify, and watch these Durham Bull Dailies mini pods on our YouTube channel at Durham Bulls TV. I'm Patrick Keenis for Durham Bulls Daily.